Welcome back. My name is Miri and today we're going to talk about the stages of Alzheimer's disease. Now there are a few models out there that are used for the progression of Alzheimer's disease, but in this video we're going to focus specifically on the Riesberg's seven stages of dementia, which is also known as the global deterioration scale. And before we get into each level, I think it's important for you to understand that dementia is the general term that is used for a group of symptoms that are caused by serious disorders of the brain. And that includes vascular dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, as well as Alzheimer's disease, which accounts for, this is a lot, up to 75% of all the dementia cases out there. So let's get back to the seven stages, which can be further broken down to two categories, the pre-dementia stage and the dementia stage. Uh, stages one through three are the pre-dementia stages and levels four through seven are the dementia stages. So stage one, there is no cognitive impairment here. At stage one, the person does not complain of having any memory problems and the memory deficits are not evident on any clinical interviews. Stage two, very mild cognitive decline. So at this stage, memory deficits are still not evident on clinical interviews. However, the person may begin to notice and complain about memory problems. So forgetting a word or having trouble remembering recent events or names of people that they knew really well. Or it could be something very subtle, like forgetting where they left their keys, or their jacket, or their wallet, or whatever it may be, which actually happens to many of us. And for these individuals who are ages 65 and over, they may even overlook it as common age-related memory impairments. At this stage, the impairments that they're experiencing are not serious enough to impact their social life and their job, and family and friends may not even notice that there is any sort of cognitive decline, but the person experiencing it may begin to question and wonder if there are uh, memory problems at this stage. Stage three, mild cognitive decline. It's still hard to get a very clear diagnosis at this stage. And remember, we're still at the pre-dementia stage. But this is where family, friends, and those that are closest to the individual may begin to notice deficits in memory and recall. So I'm going to tell you a story, a personal story, to help illustrate this stage. Uh, just a few days ago, I took my dog Stella to my mother's house and asked her to watch her a few hours and the only thing I told my mom was do not cut her hair because my mom enjoys doing that every now and then and a few hours later when I came back she looked like a big rat my mom had cut her so much I mean some parts of her body looked like it was just shaved off so when I asked her mom why did you do that that's the only thing I asked of you I mean I'm grateful that you're watching her but you did the very thing I asked you not to do she looked a bit flustered and she said you know I actually forgot you told me that the moment I went upstairs now I know that she's been complaining about having memory problems for quite some time now and no one's really noticed any deficits but recently, she's been doing these things, forgetting what, what just happened and forgetting what somebody just said, forgetting the names of people that she met. And it made me wonder, just for a moment, if it could be that she's at stage three. I don't know, and I hope not, but these are the sort of things that begin to happen. At stage two, uh, the person may begin to start questioning if they have memory problems and they may start complaining. At stage three, however, it's the family and friends that will begin to notice, and that the person, though feeling anxious about these symptoms, may exhibit denial and be resistant to the idea that there may be any problems. Um, also at stage two, the impairments were not great enough for it to actually impact social settings and employment, although at this level you will begin to see uh, decreased performance with demanding work and social environments. So that's stage three. Stage four, moderate cognitive decline. We have now reached the dementia stage, and this is mild dementia. So if you remember, stages one through three, memory deficits were not evident on clinical interviews. But this is the stage at which you will see clear-cut deficits on clinical interviews. 
Okay, so at this stage, the person is still oriented to time and place and can still recognize familiar faces and people. However, they will start to have difficulty handling finances or doing really challenging, complex, or sequential tasks like driving or shopping, ordering food at a restaurant, anything that requires uh, sequencing and or planning, uh, you will begin to see deficits. Uh, denial will be a major defense mechanism at this stage and they will require assistance at home. And I think one of the major differences between stage three and stage four is that deficits will be noted in all IADLs at this stage and that's instrumental activities of daily living. So while those were independent at stage three, you will begin to see deficits in all IADLs at stage four. Stage five, moderately severe cognitive decline, and this is considered moderate dementia. So by this stage, the individual can no longer live alone because they cannot function independently anymore and requires cues and assistance to perform ADLs and IADLs, so activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living. Um, they will forget a very important major relevant aspects of their life, such as their phone number and their address. They won't be able to recall it when they need to during interviews or when they get lost. And they will also be frequently disoriented to time and place. So when I think about this stage, I remember a time and an encounter I had with this very sweet lady a couple years back during my lunch break. There was commotion outside and a lot of honking, so I went out and I saw that there was a car literally in the middle of a very busy street in Los Angeles and this woman just sort of wandering about looking lost and not knowing what to do. I went up to her and I asked her where she's trying to go, if she's lost, what her phone number was, if she had any information or a contact that I could uh, use to reach someone. She didn't have anything and she couldn't remember anything. So I ended up calling the cops to get her some help and to get her home safely. But this is an example of someone at stage five, inability to really uh, remember their home number, their address, uh, forgetting uh, really important aspects of their life, not being oriented to where you are, uh, feeling distraught and confused, inability to drive safely at this point. So that is stage five. Stage six, severe cognitive decline. This is considered moderately severe dementia. By this stage, the patient can no longer speak in a complete full sentences and they will have trouble following even simple two-step commands and tasks. You may also see personality and emotional changes as they become increasingly frustrated, agitated, anxious, irritable, and they may also exhibit obsessive or delusional behaviors. At this stage, they may also become incontinent and uh, the caregiver will have an increased burden as they will have to provide assistance with all ADLs and IADLs. Stage seven, very severe cognitive decline. This is considered severe dementia. By this stage, the patients are no longer able to sit, stand, and walk, and they will typically be bedbound. They will also lose the ability to talk, and they will not be able to respond to uh, questions or commands verbally or non-verbally. They will require total assistance around the clock, and as a result, uh, secondary complications are common at this final stage, such as diseases, infection, falls, and particularly pneumonia. So that was Reesburg's seven stages of dementia. And before I close out this video, I just want to say that this is dedicated to Life on Holiday, who was the first to leave a comment and subscribe on this channel since I started making videos a week ago. So here's your requested video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for leaving such an encouraging comment. It inspired me to make more. So I'll see you next time.